What is going on guys, it's Motodwarfer here, welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to get PC games, more PC games running on Gen 2 Linux for the PS4. So this is a Linux distro that you can install on your PS4 that I've already done a full setup guide for, uh, for your 5.05 .05 PS4. I'll link it in the top right and down in the, in the description so that if you don't already have the operating system installed on your PS4, watch that video and then you can come onto this one. But in this video, we're focusing on trying to get more PC games running. I figured since that a lot of people are in lockdown right now, if you only have a 5.05 .05 PS4, you don't have a gaming PC, then this is a chance for you to run a wider variety of different games, being able to run some PC games. But it is Linux, it is a Linux operating system, and Linux is generally not very good when it comes to gaming. Um, normally you would run games on Windows, but there are ways that we can kind of get around that and get more games running on Linux on the PS4. Also, the PS4 is kind of underpowered, but we can run games if we lower the resolution, lower some settings, we can get games running fairly well, at least to a playable state. So that's the idea behind this video. If you're already familiar with gaming on Linux, you probably already know everything I'm gonna cover in this video anyway, but I was getting a lot of people in my setup guide on this operating system asking how to get certain game launchers like the Blizzard game launcher running or the Epic Game Store running because they're for Windows only and certain Windows only games, how you run those. So that's what we're covering here in this video. So first of all, um, if you're gonna be playing using your PS4 controller, you'll need to get that connected. You can connect it via the charge cable to the PS4. If you don't have any spare USB slots available in your PS4, if you have the Bluetooth drivers working, which you'll know if you have the little Bluetooth icon here on the taskbar. If you click that, you can connect your controller via Bluetooth. Basically, all you have to do is hold down the share button and the PS button down at the same time on your PS4 controller until it starts uh, blinking white. And then your controller should appear as an available device that you can connect to. And once that actually connects successfully, it might not work the first time, you might have to do it a couple of times but there we go it worked first time for me then you'll get the steady blue light on the ps4 controller to show that it's connected and that's how you get your controller uh, synced up there so next thing i'm going to do is open up the terminal and adjust the gamma because for some reason it's a bit too dark I, this only happens on some ps4s it might only be ps4 pros but with my ps4 it's like the gamma or the brightness is set just a tad too low on here which means I have to adjust it in every game that I run so I'd rather just adjust it for the whole operating system so that I don't have to keep adjusting it in every game that I run so what you can do is type in xrand r if you have the same problem and then that will give you your hdmi device uh, your output device so hdmi a 0 then type in xrand r space dash dash output space and then the output device, so HDMI A 0 space dash dash gamma, and then space, and then put in, you know, 1.1 or 1.2. I think 1.1 will do. 1.0 is default. So we do 1.1 colon 1.1 colon 1.1. Press enter, just brightens it up a little bit. So we'll go ahead and do that if you need to. So we'll start off with Steam here. So if we go ahead and run Steam, you'll find Steam in the game section. So applications, games, and you'll find Steam already pre-installed for you. You can just search for it if it's not already there. So if we head to our library here. So the first thing that you'll notice is most games are not installable because they're for Windows only. The only games that you will be able to install are games like Left 4 Dead. So if I run this game, you can see it runs absolutely fine. And the reason that it runs okay is because it has a Linux version of the game and it uses OpenGL as the graphics API. So you need to have a game that supports Linux and uh, uses like OpenGL or Vulkan graphics renderer. And then you should have no problems with that kind of game. It should be installable and runnable. And it should run, as you can see here, the game runs absolutely fine, no problem. But for these other games that are Windows only, uh, that will not allow you to install them, a simple fix for that is to go up to Steam in the top left, and then go to your settings, then go down to Steam Play, 
and enable Steam Play for supported titles and click OK. That will require a restart. OK, and once we restart, we should be good. So if we go into Library, Home, and now you can see that more games will be installable. Not every game, but Doom is now installable. And the way that Steam Play works is it basically runs the, the Windows version of the game in a Windows wrapper. So it allows the game to run inside Linux through this Windows wrapper, uh, Proton. So Doom will work absolutely fine. As you can see, uh, this is me running Doom on my PS4 Pro here uh, using Vulkan because it uses OpenGL and Vulkan for the graphics uh, renderer or graphics API. So Doom runs absolutely fine, but a lot of other games are still not runnable. So to make these other games installable, if you go back up to Steam, go back to settings, go back to Steam Play and enable Steam Play for all other titles and make sure the latest version of Proton is selected. Click OK, restart Steam again. So now every game, as you can see on my library here, is installable. And some games, even though they've not been configured to work with Proton yet, will still work. So Halo, the Master Chief Collection, actually runs um, through Proton, even though it's not a supported title. So as you can see, it's running fairly well. There are some issues with it, but if you tone down the graphics settings to performance and change the resolution down to 720p, the game is playable. You can play Halo um, CE Anniversary. Even the remastered graphics runs okay. There are issues where the frame can drop when things get a bit too uh, cluttered in game or when there's big explosions and stuff like that. But you can use the tab key on the keyboard or the back button to switch to the classic graphics and, and you should have no problems playing in classic mode. So with the classic graphics, the game runs pretty well. So that's Halo the Master Chief Collection. So some games will run, uh, even if they're not support a supported title for Steam Play. But then some other games are not working. So Supreme Commander here, this is an old RTS from 2007. It does not run very well at all. I mean, it tries to run, but as you can see, these, this is just the basic logo at the start of the game, and it's running at about half a frame per second. So it's completely unplayable. Uh, Sniper Elite NZA, if I try and run this, it doesn't even attempt to run, it just stops. Um, it goes back to saying play again because the process just uh, kills itself. So yeah, unfortunately, some games are still not going to be runnable like that. So in order to try and get some of these other games that are just not running, uh, in order to get them working, you can download them here on Steam. But then we can use Lutris. So if we go to Applications, Games and then run Lutris or Lutris. It might be pronounced Lutris, but I'm just going to call it Lutris because I don't know, Lutris sounds weird to me. So anyway, if we open up Lutris here, I'm going to change the mode to dark mode because, you know, everybody knows that's better. And then you can add your games in here. So import games. You can select Steam. And the thing about Lutris is it's basically a kind of all-in-one game launcher. You can use it to launch all your games for even, not just your PC games, but even your emulators, your games that run through different emulators. You can run all from this one platform, plus other game launchers as well. So you can run everything from this one launcher, which is pretty handy. So if we select all and then just import games, and then that will add them all in here so you can launch them from here. So these games are not working through Proton, through the Linux version of Steam. So what we can do is try the Windows version of Steam. So to do that, we can click the, conf the little configure icon here next to runners. So that will open up the manage runners page. Then from here, we can scroll down until we find Wine Steam, which is the Windows version of Steam running in a Windows wrapper um, so it can run on Linux. So if we install this runner, Okay, there we go. If we refresh, you can see that it's now installed. We've got the Windows version of Steam installed. There's also different versions of Wine that you can install here as well. If you just tick one, it'll start downloading that version of Wine. So when you run the game, you can choose which version of Wine you want the game to run through. So if one version isn't working, you can download any one of these other versions and try that. So it's a lot of trial and error, but using these different versions of Wine, you might find one that works better than the others. So there we go. Click OK. So now we can exit out of this and we can start installing 
the Windows version. So the best way to do it is to use an install script on Lutris's website. So if you go onto the web browser, so if you go to the web browser, go to lutris.net and then search for the name of the game, any install scripts that are available for the game will show up in here. So you can see this is for the Steam Windows version. And it also gives you some hints about how to improve the game's stability, like turning off the or turning on the bloom setting will result in a black screen on some graphics cards. So changing the resolution can cause the game to crash. And it also recommends setting the fidelity setting to medium or low. So if we run this install script, then what that'll do is it should start the process here on Lutris. And the reason why you want to use an install script preferably is because it will also install any extra dependencies that the game might need in order to run better. So it's definitely worthwhile installing it using an install script on the website. So I had to sign into my Steam account there and I think that's kind of broken the installer. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel it because it's not going anywhere. And then what I'll do is I'll just run the installer again from the website. Okay, so now it's ready to install the game. So if you don't already have the game installed, just click next. It will download it on Steam. And then once it's installed, it should launch the game. But because I already have the game installed on the Linux version of Steam, and because it's through Proton, it's the Windows version of Steam that's installed anyway. The, the only reason why it has to reinstall it is because the, it uses a different install location uh, on Lutris than it does on the Linux version of Steam. So if you run into this problem, what you can do is just copy the game, just cut and paste it from the Linux uh, install location to the Windows uh, Steam install location, and then it won't have to re-download the game again. So to do that, if you go into the file manager and then just go to dot steam, uh, steam, then steam apps, common, and then take the games that you want. So these two games here, right click and cut them, go back to the home directory, then go to local share Lutris uh, runners, wine steam, prefix 64, drive C, program files 86, steam, steam apps. And then if there's not already a common folder in here, you'll have to create one. So create a new folder called common and then paste them in here. And now that you've done that, it shouldn't have to re-download the game again. So we click next, agree, and what it'll do is it will discover existing files, as you can see. So it's just verifying the integrity of those files. And once it's done that, it will instantly finish the download and we should be good to go. Okay, so it says it's now downloading the game, but obviously it finishes instantly because the game's already installed. So we can click finish. But before I launch the game, I'm going to close it first of all and go to Wine Steam to get the correct version. And now if I configure the game settings, and we go into runner options. You can change the version of wine in here. So if the default version doesn't work, you can change it. Personally, I'd recommend using 4.21 staging or the latest staging version, because that tends to be the one that works the best with most games. Not in all cases, but in the majority of cases, that seems to be the one that's most compatible. So I'm going to select that one. And then you can also enable DXVK or D9VK, which they basically translate DirectX calls to Vulkan. So we can't run DirectX natively on Linux, but we can use uh, DXVK and D9VK to translate the DirectX calls to the Vulkan renderer instead so it can handle them. And that way we get better performance. So Supreme Commander is an old game from 2007, so it uses DirectX 9. Uh, so DX9, D9VK is for DirectX 9, DXVK is for DirectX 11 and 10. So I'll enable D9VK for this game and save. And then we'll try and run the game and hopefully it'll work. Yep, there we go. And there we go. That is running much, much better. As you can see, that was running at half a frame per second before. And D9VK appears to be working as well because we're running perfectly fine. Uh, so let's go into a game and see what kind of frame rate we get. Okay, so there we go. We're running pretty well. I'm not sure what settings we're on right now, actually. Let's have a look. 
So 1680 by 1050, which is fine. So as you can see, it's running 60 FPS, 40 FPS. It dips down into the 40s, but that's definitely playable. So let's see. It feels smooth enough as well while I'm running it here. Just create a few mass extractors. Just see what it's doing. 55 seems to be running fine. So we've now made this game completely playable. Definitely playable now. Uh, compared to the state that it was in initially on the Linux version of Steam. So that's one game, that's one success there. We've got a game running that wasn't running before. All right, so there we go, we got that game working. So let's try the other one real quick. So Sniper Elite, so this one wasn't working at all. So I'll just hop back onto uh, Lutris.net and then search for the game and get the steam windows version obviously if you have the game as just a regular download as the windows version not through steam then you can run the regular wine installer to get the game running instead of the steam version but in my case it's the steam version so we'll install this i already copied the game over to the windows location so it won't have to re-download it okay so there appears to be a problem with the install script for this game because it just launches the windows version of steam it doesn't actually try and go any further and I can't actually get into my library on the Windows version of Steam here to select any, any games. Uh, so that's not working too great. What you can do though is you can like right click and then select the game from here. So maybe that will do something. Yep, there we go. That brought up the installer. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is again just say next. So here's what we can do with this game then. What we can do instead, because it's not actually, the install script's not working for it. What I can do instead is just configure the Linux version and go into the game options and copy the ID, the application ID, and then change the runner to the Wine version of Steam. And then that will reset the application ID. So you need to paste it back in and then save. In fact, also what we'll do is switch this over to wine staging and enable dxvk because this game uses i think directx 11 so dxvk should help with that we'll go ahead and save and then try and run it it should now appear here in the wine version oh there we go game is running again this didn't run at all in linux on steam the steam version or sorry the linux version of steam the game didn't run whatsoever, but as you can see here, it is indeed running. Yep, there we go. We're into the menu. All is good. Might need to configure this a little bit though. Uh, okay, so for some reason I can't change the resolution. So that's going to be a problem because this is probably not going to be playable at 1080p. Probably going to have to get it down to 720p somehow. But uh, yeah, if, if I can find a way to get it to 720p, there's probably a configuration file or something, or maybe you can configure the launch options to force it to change to uh, 720p, and then it will be playable, because right now it's not super playable, really, um, at 1080. But if you tone it down to 720p, the game should be playable. But as you can see, it runs here on the PS4 now, when it wasn't before in the Linux version of Steam. So we got both of those games working that weren't working before. So let's have a look at some game launchers as well, since a lot of people are wanting to get other game launchers running like Battle.net. So if we search for Battle.net here in Lutris, there is an install script for it. So you can just select the one that says gold works flawlessly with some minor tweaking. And it says it uses wine, which is fine. So we can click install, run that. And that will get us the battle.net launcher. Uh, these kind of launchers require a lot of dependencies, so it might take a while to install. All right, and there you go. As you can see, Blizzard battle.net is running, and now you can download your games from within here. Uh, let's try Epic Games Store as well. I'm sure they have that. Uh, Epic Games. So just search for Epic Games, and you'll find the Epic Games Store. Again, wine works flawlessly. Run the install script. Gets added into Lutris. Install, install, 
yeah, there you go. You've got uh, Epic Game Launcher, you've got the Blizzard Launcher, so you can install those launchers, and they're now runnable from within Lutris. And finally, what I would say is if you're going to install any games from any of these kind of launchers here, the best thing to do is use an install script for the game itself rather than just in, you know using the launcher in Lutris and downloading and running the game from uh, from here. It's better to use an actual install script for each individual game that you want to install because there might be some extra dependencies that that game specifically requires that are not included in the launcher. For example, if we wanted to install Hearthstone here, since it's the only free game that's on here, I think. Go back into the browser here and search for the game. So Hearthstone. So there you go, there is a version right here. Configure and install dependencies, install, open. And the thing is, the game itself will probably install the battle.net launcher anyway, because it has to launch through that. But you still want to do it. All right, there you go. So it's just better to have it like this so you can launch it from within here instead of using battle.net launcher on its own. That way, every game that you install from those launchers, you can configure each game individually to, you know, enable DXVK or D9VK and also change the wine version because one game might work better in one wine version than the other. So it's just better to do that. So yeah, that is basically it. That's how you get more games working on PS4 Linux and other game launchers running. Also, just to uh, prove that we're running on a PS4 here because I always get comments from people who doubt that this is running on a PS4, especially since I didn't actually show me going from the PS4 operating system to the uh, Linux operating system. If I run that command there, you can see AMD Liverpool, uh, which is the code name for the AMD GPU that's inside the PS4. Plus we've got all the peripherals, all the hardware, is by Sony Corporation, which you wouldn't find on a normal computer. So yeah, hopefully that, uh, you know, that's just for those people who <laughs> who I, I always get comments from. But uh, yeah, anyway, that is how you get more games running on uh, PS4 Linux on Gen 2 for the PS4 on 5.05. So stay tuned for the next video, which will be running CMU emulator, which is a Wii U emulator where you can run a lot of your favorite Nintendo games, including uh, games that are cross compatible with the Nintendo Switch like Zelda Breath of the Wild and Mario Kart 8 and Super Smash Brothers and stuff like that. So that will be the next video. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.